All right, I'm back again here for the probably fourth time. I just learned something pretty valuable, uh, and I'll try and explain that, and we'll observe what's going to happen here. But the uh, goal of this video, if you hang in there, is do the uh, second part of the setup where we're going to communicate from our War Dragon information back to our tax server that we set up in the previous video. A couple key things. I set a static IP address on the Ethernet port that's external of the War Dragon, and I'm going over a T Halo wireless bridge link to this uh, laptop that I'm recording on that I have the tax server set up on. I gave it a static IP on its Ethernet address, so or its uh, Ethernet interface, but it, it doesn't really matter. It, what really matters is, is you set up the networking best way you see fit. Probably, I would recommend installing uh, sudo app install OpenSSH dash server as a, as a backup into your uh, War Dragon. I'm just going to connect over Rust Desk. Uh, with Rust Desk, I highly recommend that you keep your ID and stuff uh, private. I'm going to rotate out in this video, so I'm not too concerned about it. One thing I did notice, and I'm going to check here again real quick. hard to see out here. Okay, so we're still recording. I noticed some kind of bug with uh, screen recording and getting initially connected to the War Dragon. I kept having the password not be accepted. It was driving me nuts. I stopped uh, Simple Screen Recorder and now the password works. So I don't know, something worth looking at later. Um, but let me go ahead and log in here and make sure that we're still, okay, we're still recording. I'm going to change this to uh, scale adaptive. Y you will notice that you get kicked out uh, once when the desktop loads and it'll come back on. You may have to sign back in. But now we're on the and looking at the Rust desk here remotely. And it's a little windy out here, so uh, bear with me. I think in the last video I showed the key services that are running on the War Dragon. You just want to be aware that uh, the War Dragon is pre configured to uh, along with the software defined radio to look for uh, Wi-Fi and a Bluetooth based remote ID and to some extent some drone ID that's in within uh, DJI's OcuSync so it's a little more complex and that's what I'm going to show today I have a DJI a Mini 2 and we're going to show sending information back to our tax server another thing is um, I'm just going to pause the video for a second because I need to connect to a different wireless network on the laptop I'll be right back Okay, I'm back. I wanted the laptop to have internet as well so that our maps within the TAC server, uh, I, I didn't set it up for uh, offline map data or anything like that. So I'm the laptop is wirelessly connected to internet, and then of course the ethernet gets me to the War Dragon, which I'm connected to right now. And honestly, if we go within our War Dragon folder and within our Dragon Sync folder, there is the various different ways that you can run this from the command line. I'm going to take a look at the config.ini and you'll see some settings that I changed which was changing the TAC host which is the laptop that I'm on that I put statically at 101. I'm just using the UDP port which is unsecure just as an initial, hey, here's a very quick setup where you don't have to worry about certificates or anything, and you can get information into your tax server. And I disabled uh, the multicast. I just put false. I could run multicast as well on the LAN. What I would really want to do is specify the multicast interface, uh, whether physically the interface name, or I could put the uh, 10.0.0. Let me think. Uh, 101 actually would be the uh, Ethernet interface, and that would go multicast out to anybody on the network. Now I'm showing this config.ini because the key is is if you set this up, then there is a sudo, uh, sudo system ctl enable Dragon Sync service. Okay, so if you get your config file set the way you want it, and then you and uh, enable and start that service. Every time you reboot the War Dragon, this Dragon Sync repo is going to come up and be running. Uh, so you really don't have to do anything. You just power up your box. You know that it's uh, booted up, and it'll start. And you know, of course, if you have the network connection uh, set up correctly, it'll start sending information to your TAC server. I'm going to run it manually just so you can kind of see what's going on here. And so we'll do that 
first by just doing a Python 3 Dragon Sync and I'll do a dash D. I won't put anything else and it should pick up some of the settings in the config file. Although if you're not sure that it is, you can put a dash, uh, sorry, dash dash config and then specify the location of that config file. And so uh, you can see it's skipping multicast. Um, there's no drones in the area yet. What it is going to do is periodically send a cursor around target message that the War Dragon produces itself, which is going to give away its GPS location, the temperature of the box, uh, resources in use. Let me make sure that this is still, yep, still recording. So there you go. There is a uh, cursory on target message. It even shows the temperatures of the uh, the Ant SDR itself, although I have it labeled there as Pluto. Um, that's just uh, the uh, temperatures inside the SDR. Uh, let's see, what else? So now, with that information, and you see how simple that was, so if you get the config file set, and um, even if you're using certs, you've put the path to the certs, I think we'll have enough time to go over that as well. We should be able to pull up our uh, browser. So we should be able to pull up our browser here. And so we're gonna we're gonna pull up our browser and we're gonna go to our 000843. And this is what we set up previously. And remember we, we added the port for 8054. So we'll go to our situational awareness. And let's see let's see what we're looking at with um, WebTAC here. So there's our, well, that's me. Okay, so here I am in uh, WebTAC. We got a park here. We can see the War Dragon is reporting in. Okay, so we're looking good there. You can see we're getting information in. If we look at here, we can see that the cop messages are going. So now what I'm going to do, oops, I'm going to fire up, I'm going to fire up a DJI, and if I've missed any details, let me know in the description, but I feel like I'm stepping through everything here. We're going to fire up the, D, the uh, Mini 2, and then we're going to fly this around a little bit. We should get pilot location from the uh, app. We should get home location and drone location itself. So let me get DJI Fly. get a second here point we got home point updated Oop. we got DJI showing up we got the home location now if you scroll out a little bit if you look under remarks you're gonna see there's the RISI the serial number altitude, the operator's location, home. Um, you'll get uh, uh, more information there. We've got, let me see, so I don't have map data, but we got the pilot location, which if you click on that under remarks, you're gonna get uh, the pilot location for drone and then what drone it's the pilot location for. Let's see if we can get some map data. Now I'm going to take this out a little bit further so we can get, let's see, which way can I, we'll see if we can how this tracks in real time here. 
real time. It's about every three seconds or so. I think that it um, it updates, and so we got the drone going further out. Alright, so we can track the drone, bring it back, it's pretty windy. It's getting pretty blown off course. And so really that's what I wanted to highlight, just to show, you know, other than the initial uh, setup that's needed, you know, maybe maybe a little bit uh, complicated just to get the Rust desk and get comfortable with accessing the War Dragon remotely, but really everything is set up to boot up and run via services to check to see if they're running. So you should be pretty good to go as far as detecting and getting that information to your tax server or in the next video I'll show a little introduction or a little more introduction to an application that a gentleman by the name of Luke is creating it has both an iOS app that can connect directly to the War Dragon at whatever IP address it has and uh, siphon data right off the ZMQ servers as opposed to getting cursory on target and uh, there should be an Android version as well but uh, for those that are really wanted to integrate in with TAC, that's really the key thing there is that Dragon Sync repo, getting it set up, and then of course getting the network uh, done properly. Now let's see if I've got enough time here in the time that this thing is flying. We can go back. I might be pushing my luck here. Let me make sure it's still recording. Okay. We can go back here. Uh, let me think. Let me think. So we can. 8089. So what we can do is copy home war dragon. Let me see. Home dragon war dragon tax server. Fo uh, let me think. Where are we at here? Um, oh, no wonder. I'm on the wrong system here. Well. Let me think. I would have to War Dragon Tax Server Files. No, what is it? Uh, Tac fo Certs Files. So we would have to Python 3 Tac M HTTP dot Server. We would have to pull down. I hate doing this on the fly here. Uh, let me see. Let's grab user 1 p 12 okay user 1 p 12 now we can do downloads uh, user 1 p 12 we'll copy it here we'll do nano config the ini TCP, we'll do home, actually, let me think, user1.p12, password ATAC, ATAC, let's try this and see if that works right in the same directory here, what do we get, do we get a connection there? Let's, let's go back to our attack server and let's let's go to 8443 we'll go to configuration no uh, inputs 
the data. Let's see, so 8089. Oh, good, we are getting messages in. Okay, so now we're running. See how easy that was? I say easy, but so now we're getting in information securely. Let's do situational awareness. WebTAC. Okay, give it a second to update. Now let's fly out and make sure that we're getting caught messages in via TCP, secured with certificate based connection to the TAC server. Yep, there we go. So we got updates and we are now using the certificate based connection. Where are we at? Okay. So let's see, you know what? Let me do a little distance test here. Okay, so we're getting that in there and honestly the uh, you know if you're using multicast and looking at um, ATAC uh, it, it generally updates uh, a little bit better in, in my opinion um, let's bring this back you can see I went out that was about 250 meters there um, just maintaining line of sight here and we're going to bring this back and uh, I think this is uh, pretty good as far as how this turned out alright so thanks for hanging in there and hopefully this is helpful just kind of follow along and you should be able to get your war dragon uh, sending curse around target to your tax server whether it's a unsecure UDP or with a certificate based connection via TCP alright thank you